Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to showcase every single feature added in C Sharp 12. Now in this video I'm not going to go too in depth in every single feature because I've already made videos for basically everything you're gonna see here and the changes from the previews all the way to release are very minor. I will link that playlist below in case you want to check it out. Treat this video as more of a catch up where you can just scan through everything just to keep up to date with the language features. If you want to grab the code for any of these samples the link is in the description down below. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe for more training check out my courses on domtrain.com. Now before I move on I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on domtrain called From Zero to Hero NT Framework. In that course our new author Hannes Lawet will take you into an eight hour journey learning everything there is to learn about NT Framework and this course is actually two courses into one. We did think of releasing them as two separate courses but it makes more sense for your experience to be one massive one. Hannes is an excellent teacher who has been teaching NT Framework for years, he does conference talks, workshops, he's just amazing and I know him personally, he was one of my very first hand-picked authors for Dome Train, and he knocked it out of the park with this one. There is no better NT Framework resource out there right now, all up to date with everything you need to know all the way up to dot Net 8. Now as always to celebrate the launch I'd like to offer the first 500 of you a 20% discount code so use the link in the description and don't wait for Black Friday because this course will be excluded on Black Friday so 20% will be the max you can get. Alright enough with that now back to the video. Okay so first one is primary constructors. What are primary constructors? Well it's a feature we kind of had in a way before but now it applies to a different set of types in C Sharp. So Previously, we already had in C-Sharp 9 the ability to create a record. So I can say record, and by default a record is a class. And I could say user, and then the user could have properties here. For example, I can define the name as a property. And then if I was to go into the program.cs and say var user equals and create a new user, then I could say Nick Chapsas, and then I can use that user name as a property. We already had that. Now what we're getting in C Sharp 12 is the ability to do the same thing on the class level. So I can say string name. However, in this case, by default, this is just a constructor parameter. So in the same way, you would do something like this over here, where you would say public and create a constructor. That's basically the same thing, but you're just removing the boilerplate and you're moving it all the way up here. Now, please note that here on the record, this is a property. Here, it is just a constructor parameter by default, but it can change. For example, if you want to use it in a method and say public void test, for example, and you want to print for some reason that name, then now behind the scenes, this is converted into a private field. However, don't get tricked because this is not a private read-only field. You can still change it. So if you use this feature for dependency injection, note that anything in this class can actually change the parameter. This can be used in many places from properties to methods to constructors to whatever you want. So for more details, check my detailed video on primary constructors. Now the next feature is called collection expressions. Let's say I want to define an array of integers in C Sharp. One of the ways to do it is like this, where I have int array or just var depending on what you want to go with and then the name and then I can say new array and then have all the values in these brackets. Now this works fine however what we get now in C sharp 12 is the ability to use a collection expression and simplify this. So now by just using these angle brackets I can just do that and then say int 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and simplify that initialization. Now keep in mind I can't use var anymore here. I have to be explicit with my type because if I don't then there is no target type for the expression. So you can't use var. Some people like this, some people hate it. You can choose whatever you want but now you can do this. Now this doesn't only apply on arrays, it applies to other things as well and the plan is to expand even further. For example if you want to have a span you can do something like this. Or if you want to have a jagged 2D array you can do something like this. You can even create a jagged 2D array from variables. So this is also allowed. Another thing you can do here actually is use a spread operator and turn this jagged 2D array to just a normal array. Now in case you can't read this, the way this works is that the output here will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Just all in one array. It's a very handy and very nice feature. It's kind of unfinished and the reason why I say that is because the plan was to also have this for a dictionary. However, this did not make it in C Sharp 12, but we did kind of get an unofficial feature which is a way to define an empty dictionary. So let's say I want to define a dictionary here I'm going to give it a name. I can do this to define an empty dictionary and I say new dictionary and all this. I can also use just the new keyword without having to specify the type and this will also work. But now in C Sharp 12, if I want to define this dick as an empty dick, <laughs> 
why am I like this? Then all I have to say is use empty angle brackets and this will work. It's basically the same thing as new dick. Now, next we have ref read only parameters. Now, I want to preface this by saying this feature is basically added for Microsoft and the 0.0001% who will ever need this. So, I'm not going to go in too much detail about this. I will in the future make an in depth video, but it's very, very niche. Basically, what this feature is, is imagine the following you have a class over here where we create a new example. We set an age as 30, and then we say example.test, and we have the example method over here. Now, what we can do here is we can just pass 30, and if I run this, this will return. 30. Nothing special. It's also going to print this message twice. The age is 30, the age is 30. Now, ref is a value type, but what if I want to pass in a reference to the age? Well, I can do that by saying ref age here and then ref age here. And if I do that, I'm passing down the reference of the integer, not the integer value itself, which is what happens by default because value types are copied by default. Now, nothing changes per se if I do that, but this gives me the ability if I want to, to go and say H++ over here. And if I do that and I go ahead and quickly run this, then as you're going to see, the code will execute and I'm actually going to increase the reference of the integer, not the value itself. So the effect will be applicable outside of the method. Previously, we would actually prevent this by using the in keyword. So I can say in int age and this will give a compilation error saying you can't do this. Now in C Sharp 12, what you can do is you can actually use the ref read only keyword combination and this will give you the same experience on the surface. Now, since we had it, why did we re-add it with two keywords instead of one? Well, the explanation is a bit complicated, but basically APIs who capture and return reference from the parameters would like to disallow our values, write values, and also enforce some indication on the call side that the reference is being captured. The next feature is called default lambda parameters and it's a very nice quality of life feature. Let's say I have a lambda over here where I say int age nick is age 30. If I want to invoke that lambda, then I have to pass down a parameter. I have to say 30 years old. However, what I couldn't do before C Sharp 12 is to set a default value to this call. Now I can, and now I can just say int age whatever by default, and I don't have to specify it, but if I want to specify it, then I can. See you in 20 years. The next feature is called alias any type, and it is trippy. I have a very in-depth video on that feature. You can check it out, description down below. But basically what this feature is doing is that it's relaxing the rules on where the using alias directive can be used. Previously, pointer types, array types, and more specifically, tuples could not use it, but now they can, and that changed the game. I can basically now do the following. I can say using point 2D, so a point in 2D space, equals int x int y. And I can now use that as basically a tuple that looks like a struct. So I can do var point equals, and I can create a point in 2D space like this. And this, if I just give it the type, is a point to D. I have an implicit conversion, and I could also say, by the way, if I want to, new point to D, as if it is a class or a record with a constructor. I can totally see this being a bit trippy, and my first thought is like, oh, people will abuse this, but actually, you never really know what's behind the new keyword anyway. Is it a record? Is it a struct? Is it a class? Like, it can be anything. So this is just another thing it can be. As with any tuple, this, of course, can be deconstructed. So you can say uh, int x and int why if you want here and use those in your class. Very nice feature, very handy. I really want to see how creative people can use this to build cool stuff. The next feature is called inline arrays. And this is another feature that Microsoft basically made for themselves and they're just making it public because why not? In fact, even in the description of the feature, they say that this feature is used by the runtime team in .NET in Microsoft and also library authors with the main goal of improving performance in the applications that use .NET or those libraries. What they do is that they basically allow the developer to have a fixed size struct array. The way that it aims to improve performance is that a struct with an inline buffer would provide similar performance characteristics to an unsaved fixed size buffer. And if this makes no sense to you, don't worry, you probably won't need it. If you just want to know how it looks, that's how it is. You just have an inline array here, you define the size, you have an element parameter here and that's basically it like we said it is a struct and by the way in case you don't know arrays by default are reference types this is a struct so it can be a value type and then in my code i can just use this as a nude object i can set the values and then i can iterate it if i want to and this will allocate on the stack in this case very performant and can be used in many scenarios to improve performance even further the next feature is the experimental attribute so let's say you have an application and you want to add a feature that is a bit risky because it might be preview it might be experimental it might be 
removed. It could be anything. What you can do now is you can say experimental over here. You have the experimental attribute and then you specify what they call the diagnostic ID. So it can be risky ID, for example. And by doing that, if I go on program.cs and try to use this feature, now I have a compilation error and it says that this feature is for evaluation purposes only and is subject to change or removal in future updates. Basically, you have to explicitly suppress this error over here if you want to continue. That's basically it. Now, is it big enough of a feature to be listed in the added feature of C Sharp 12? I don't know, but it's here. Who's going to use this? Probably Microsoft and some library authors. That is it. Are you seeing a pattern here? Because I do. Microsoft seems to be adding many stuff that they need and they just happen to make them public and not really things that we need. The last feature is called Interceptors. And in my opinion, it's the most interesting feature of the release. And it's also in preview. So you have to opt in if you want to use it. And I think there's a very small amount of people who are actually use this again. Let's see how it works. Let's say that I have this example class where I have a method one that just prints something in the console. And then I have method two that accepts a name and it prints that in the console with some message like we did up here. Now in the program.cs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to instantiate the example class and then say method one and method two. And if I do that, as you'd expect, I'm going to get the following messages. Now what interceptors allow me to do is, as the name implies, to intercept something in the code. What? Well, the code itself. You can actually intercept invocations of methods and replace them with other code on compile time. How does this work? Well, I can go to this class I made, interception.cs, and I'm going to turn this into a static class. And then I'm going to say public static void intercept method one. Now, this will need to be an extension method. So this example, which is the class that contains the method I want to intercept. So I can just pass it here. And this means I can access things in this class. And then all I'm going to say is hello from interceptor. Now, how do I wire this up in my code? Well, I actually don't have to edit the code I'm intercepting at all. That's the whole point. I'm coming from afar. In fact, this is technically the come from keyword from intercal, which is insane. And I can use the intercepts location attribute to specify the full path of the file I want to intercept. And if that sounds weird, don't worry. It's intentional because the whole point is that source generators will actually read your code and give that value. You wouldn't have to manually write it, but for the purposes of this example, I will do. So I'll be able to specify the file path and to get the file path in my case, I'm just going to right click on the file that I want to intercept the method invocation on, which is this one. So I'm going to say right click, copy full path, and then just paste it here. Then I'm going to specify the line of the method I want to intercept. So line over here is six, as you can see over here. And then what I need is the character or the column, which as you can see, in fact, you can clearly see it. But if I move myself over here, it's this character value over here that's very, very small. And in my case, it is nine. So I'm going to go here and say character nine. So line six, character nine, which is nice. So now if I do that and I go ahead and I run this code, as you're going to see, the hello from method one call was actually changed with hello from interceptor because that interceptor call is just hijacking that location and is giving whatever is in here. If I have a parameter, I can do the same thing. The only difference is that I do have to specify the parameter here as well, and I can access it and I can use it. And if I do that and I say run this, then as you're going to see, I'm going to get hello from interceptor Nick. And that is it. You are now caught up with C Sharp 12. Please leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about this release. What's your favorite feature? What's the one you're going to use? What's the one you don't care about? And please tell me what you think about the approach that Microsoft has with launching new features, which is basically features that they need that they just make public to us, but we probably don't need them or won't use them. Many of the ones I showed you, we probably won't be using. We won't be using ref read only. We won't be using inline arrays and we won't be using experimental or interceptors, I don't think, at least not directly. I'm glad we're getting new features, but I'm a bit mixed on the feature set, especially for an LTS release. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, keep coding.